Hey guys, the Network Burger here. Hope you've been doing well. So in this video, we will be looking at how to configure a VPN service via WireGuard on your Microtik. Now I've specifically chosen Molvad VPN because I find that it is the most privacy driven VPN that I've played around with even more so than stuff like NordVPN or Surfshark. Not that I want to shoot them now, great VPN providers, especially if you're using them for something like uh, streaming content. Um, that's something that Mulvad is not really known for. So if you, if you want to get Mulvad for streaming, sorry to disappoint you, it's probably not going to be the best experience. But for privacy alone, it's definitely the best out of all of them. It's also relatively cheap. It comes down to about, I think, 550 USD per month. Um, but the cool part about Malvad VPN is it's very anonymous. So when you sign up, you don't put in your email address, your name, your phone number, none of those details. They don't ask that of you. When you click that sign up button, it's going to generate a 16 digit account number, which will basically be who you are now. And you need to go write that down. So I highly recommend writing it down actually in a notebook somewhere so that you can remember what that account number is or maybe store it in some type of uh, software, like a password manager type of thing or something, just so that you can remember what that account number is, because that effectively is who you are, and you can use that account number with the Mulvad VPN client to actually easily connect from your home computer, just by going into the client, put the account number, say what server you want to connect to in the world, and off you go. Now, Malvet is so cool because it uses stuff like WireGuard, which is why it's ideal for me to show you how to set this up on Marketic because Marketic uses WireGuard as well, but it does also use OpenVPN. So there's another option for you to go down to as well. Um, but I'm more or less going to be focusing on the WireGuard setup, which is going to be very straightforward. Now, why would you prefer to use something like um, a VPN connection on your router instead of just connecting it on all of your devices. Well, by default, you can only connect five devices with Mulvad VPN. So that would be five laptops or five tablets or five phones or something, which can very quickly become an issue. I mean, I think you can obviously get more devices added at additional costs, but maybe you just want a single VPN tunnel from your router to get to Mulvad so that you can have that sense of privacy and security from your own network without having to configure it on each and every device. Now that is why that is quite nice because then you don't have to set it up on each tablet, each phone, each laptop, each computer. It's just on the router and you're just using a single, let's say license or um, WireGuard key for your network, which is really going to, I think, help out a lot of people that want to connect privately on the internet because i mean these days things are wild guys uh, there's a lot of cyber war criminals and people just trying to get into places even normal home users get targeted these days which is quite crazy so getting something like a vpn i can highly recommend it and i just want to point out i'm not being sponsored by anybody i just really i think it's a, it's a good vpn service and i just want to show you guys how to configure this so let's actually get into the setup side, I'll start this off just by going onto the Molvad site. All right, so now I'm on the Molvad website and from here you can actually see there's a few things that you can do. This is also just kind of showing you what the app looks like. Um, you can read up more about what it is, why Molvad and how everything works in the background. Uh, but what we're interested in is going into our account. And my account here is hashed out, but as you saw on the website or on the front end, there was a sign up. So when you click on that, you can just click on generate account number and it will generate a new account for you that you can use to actually sign into Mulvad and you will have a similar type of view. It's actually going to follow four specific steps. Let me actually open that up. Let's create a new fake account, <laughs> even though I shouldn't say it's fake. So Mulvad.net is the URL. And from here, if we click on get started, we can click on the generate account number. It'll generate a 16 character account number that we can use um, to basically configure our stuff. And here you can add some, I wanna say airtime almost, or a subscription like to a game like WoW or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's basically you pay a flat amount for 30 days, I think. And you need to then either 
renew your time manually afterwards but it's cool that they offer alternative ways to buy time even through things like cryptocurrencies which is really nice then you can either download the app or you can view some guides the guides are quite nice because they actually extensively suggest how you should be browsing the internet to get the most private experience so that stuff isn't being tracked per se now why would you want that well obviously you don't want all of the big companies to see everything that you're doing all of the time because that means that they will start hammering you with specific ads and they're collecting information about you to sell to other people so it's it's not a nice experience so anyways let me go back into my actual account and then from our actual account what we can do is if we want to set this up for a microtech we can go into our wireguard configuration and then with wireguard configuration you can select the platform now if you leave it on windows that's fine you can set it to linux as well um, since microtech kind of runs linux in the background but i'm just going to leave it on windows it, it really doesn't matter too much because we're going to open up the file that we're going to generate off of this and um, use that to basically configure a microtech router with those details so now we can also generate a wireguard key these keys are very important don't lose them you're going to use them to actually connect or for wireguard to be able to work properly but just click on the generate key and from there we're just going to continue on next bit is going to ask you select one or multiple exit locations now this is basically the servers that you would like to connect to so maybe you would like to connect to servers specifically in the uk so i might select the uk but it doesn't need to be the uk it can be any of the available countries that's on this list then you can select the city so i might just say all cities and then it's going to just do all servers for me now if we go to the advanced settings you can enable stuff like multi-hop it can be ipv4 or ipv6 or both um, well the tunnel traffic it can be both and then we can set a custom listening port and kill switch uh, which i think effectively tells you what it does uh, basically if it picks up that there's traffic that's not going through the tunnel it just kind of drops the tunnel so that you know it, it's not that anything weird is happening now what I also like about WireGuard is, or not WireGuard, Mulvad, they offer additional types of content blocking. I think this is being done by their DNS servers actually, but you can set that you don't want stuff like ads, trackers, malware, adult content, gambling. So this is quite nice, especially if you're configuring this on your router, because now if your children are connecting to the router with their tablets or their phones, then they don't have access to these types of explicit sites anymore. Um, which is quite nice that you can just do it through the VPN provider instead of having to fiddle around with additional settings. Now I'm just going to deselect all of that again and then with that done we can just click on the download zip archive. Now this is going to download basically WireGuard configuration files for each server in Britain <laughs> which is quite, quite crazy. Now I might just extract this whole thing onto my desktop and I'm just quickly going to navigate to all of these files. Now, each of these config files you can technically import on Windows using the WireGuard um, application. Or what we're going to do is we're just going to right click one of them and we can open this with a text editor. So like Notepad or Notepad++ in my case. And now with Notepad++, sorry, I'm just closing a few extra things here. Um, we can actually go into the specific configuration and see what is being set up here so let me just bring this across for you guys to see because this is the interface configuration and the peer configuration now with this information we're actually going to be able to configure this on our microtech just setting up some stuff like a peer an ip address on our microtech some natting and routing and we can set the dns server as well and then we will be totally fine so let's quickly configure WireGuard on our MicroTik. It is actually running off of a VM on my hypervisor VMware, where I will have an Ubuntu VM sitting behind that um, router just to emulate a real network to get on to the internet using this Malvad VPN service. Now, what I'm going to do is just go onto Winbox quickly. This is the MicroTik in question. Now, the first step that we want to do is we actually want to head into our WireGuard tab. And then from here, we want to create a WireGuard interface. Now, this is very important because we are going to just add the interface, but we need to make sure that we set our private key as what 
was defined in our setup. So let me go into the configuration file and I'm, I'm just going to copy this private key and paste it into the microtech. I don't need to worry about the public key that's going to be generated randomly. Don't, don't stress about that. You can set the name, whatever you want to make it. Maybe you want to make this WG dash, um, let's call it UK one or something. You could also in essence, make it whatever the server was that you were connecting to on that specific WireGuard configuration file. So let's just apply this. Now that we have the WireGuard interface, we should actually add the IP address for the interface as well. Now this I will also get in this text file. So I will just copy this address and I will go into my IP address on the Microtech and I will bind this IP address to my WireGuard interface. Very important. Now that that has been done, we can look at adding our WireGuard peer configuration. So for this, I'll just head into peers. I'll click on the big plus. Now here we need to make sure that our interface is going to be the WG-UK1 since I only have one WireGuard interface, that's the only thing that's appearing. But if you have multiple interfaces, just make sure you select the one that is going to go to Molvad VPN. Next is our public key. Now this we can also extract from our configuration file. So I'll just copy this and paste it. We can also see what our endpoint is. So our endpoint is this IP address here. And then we can specify our port, which is this colon 51820. So I'll just specify that as the endpoint port. And now the allowed address in this case was 0000 slash 0. And we didn't use any pre-shared key or persistent keep alive. So we can just leave that as is, click on apply, hit OK. And now we should actually see that there should be some form of a connection or session formed here. So next step for us will be to actually just also use the DNS server, which is 10.64.0.1. So I'm just going to add that onto this Microtech as its DNS server. And I will allow remote requests so that people that use the Microtech as a DNS server can then also just get DNS entries and such or DNS requests done. And next step is going to be our routing. Now this is quite important because if I go into my IP routes, usually you would have a default route out to the internet. I don't have it here uh, because of previous labs and such, but let's say you might have a triple POE connection. Just make sure to either disable that default route out or just change it because you're going to want to either push all traffic over the wire guard, but you can also push certain traffic. It does allow for split tunneling. So you can decide what you actually want to push over WireGuard, but since this is going to be for internet browsing and such, I'm just going to push my 000.0 slash zero. So my default route, I'm going to push out over WG-UK1, which is the WireGuard interface. And I'll just hit apply. Now, this might cause some issues because the WireGuard external IP might fall under that list and it's being pushed out over the tunnel now. So what I do recommend is the endpoint IP that you're going to be connecting to, just add a route out for that via your normal internet path. So that might be, in my case, it's 192.168.149.2. That is my internet address or my gateway. Um, but this is just to make sure that the endpoint is being reached over the internet and then all other traffic will then be encrypted over this WireGuard tunnel. So that has been done. And I can already see some packets flowing through this tunnel, but we might have some issues. And when I say might, I mean the Microtech might be fine. The Microtech might have internet access out. Let's quickly test. Let's see, can I ping www.google.com? I can. So it has internet access out through the WireGuard tunnel, but does my Ubuntu VM have internet access out? So let me go onto my Ubuntu VM quickly. And I can already see it doesn't look like it has internet, but we can just verify by doing a ping to 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. And we can see that ping is failing. Now, the reason that it's failing is because I'm not natting the traffic out yet. And that is kind of something we want to do with this WireGuard interface now. So let me just go back onto Winbox and then let's go into our firewall settings. So IP firewall, and then I'll just create a new NAT rule. And I'll say anything 
that is going out of the interface WG-UK1. So anything leaving WarGuard UK1, we're going to masquerade. So now it's going to be masked as that WarGuard IP address that we've received from all that, that we've statically applied to our WarGuard interface. So I'll apply this and that should actually be it. Hey guys, this is me here. I just realized something that I might want to just make a suggestion for if you are having issues with the WarGuard connectivity. Um, just check out your firewall rules as well, because I do know that many times I lab with stuff like CCRs and CHRs, and typically there's no firewall rules that would cause any type of connection issues. So you just want to make sure that with your filter rules, that you are at least allowing the WireGuard ports that have been defined to get into your network or to go out of your network. So a good example would be, um, let's say you're going to be connecting out to that WireGuard server. You might do an output chain. You might just put in the destination address as the IP address of the server that you're going to be connecting to. So let me just quickly grab that from my routes, uh, this IP. And just specify that as our, sorry, our destination address. And we could just say the protocol that is going to be UDP because WireGuard does make use of UDP. And then our destination port in this case is going to be whatever uh, we specified as the endpoint port. So that would be, uh, let's just grab it here, 51820. So I'm just going to place that in as the external port or the destination port. And then our action just needs to be accept. And then we just move this rule to the very top. So just make sure that you don't potentially have a rule on your Microtik that could be blocking the traffic. Uh, this is a very niche thing. It's probably not going to affect you, but it could affect you because by default, Microtik is a little bit finicky with some of its rules if you just use it as a home router. Anyways, just something I wanted to clear up. Back to the video. So let's quickly navigate back to our Ubuntu VM. And I can already see it's connected. That icon there tells me it's good. But if we do a ping now, we can see, hey, we're actually getting a ping out to Google. And we can see the latency is quite high as well. 187 milliseconds, where I usually get like five or four milliseconds locally. But this is now because I'm on WireGuard. I'm, I'm on the Malvad VPN service. So we can also just verify that by going onto our browser. And I can maybe do something like, a, what is my IP? And this is now the IP address that the internet sees. So the internet will be thinking that I am coming from Blackwall, England, Great Britain, even though I'm not in Britain. <laughs> I am very far from Britain. My mother-in-law actually moved to Britain quite recently. That's why I think it's quite funny. Um, but Britain is very far away from me. But let's quickly see what happens if I just route all traffic out the normal internet way. So let's uh, disable this masquerade rule and my default route out. Instead of routing out over the WireGuard interface, let's just route out my normal internet way. So if I go back onto my, I think I might actually have an issue with the DNS now. So let's just add an additional DNS server. Sorry, this is just, I, I, I'm thinking about this stuff like while we're doing this lab and this tells you that I do everything in real time and that very little, if ever anything is scripted. Let's go back onto our VM and let's quickly see if I go onto what is my IP now. Now I am in Johannesburg, South Africa. And if I do a ping to Google now, my ping has dropped a lot lower. So pretty cool. But now my traffic is not being encrypted by a VPN and it is subject to people logging it and services like Facebook or whatever tracking me and seeing my stuff. So that is why I definitely recommend using a VPN like Malvad so that you can get around those things and now the whole network can be secured from your router instead of you having to do everything on each device or paying additional licensing. Anyways, this is where I'm going to end off the video. I hope you found it informative and if you have any questions or if you run into any issues, feel free to leave a comment and feel free to suggest anything else you'd like to see on Microtech. I hope you guys have an amazing day or evening, and I'll catch you again in the next video. Bye.